This is the Soul Podcast. The only thing in Korea that you can't purchase on coupon. I'm King Sejong, reminding you that Korean fried chicken is healthy because it's Korean. And here are your hosts, Emma Kalka and Joe McPherson. And welcome to the Soul Podcast. This is Joe. And I'm Emma. And this week, we have been trying to get him on the show for quite a bit from the Soul Light, Sean Lim. Hello, Sean. Hey, guys. Uh, Sean hey. is the founder of the Soul Light blog and YouTube channel focused on news, politics, opinion, business, fiction, and style. From the Lens of Modern Soul, a useful peek into the Korean mindset for expats and fans of K-culture. How did that sound? That sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever written it that way before. <laughs> <laughs> and I've written it really good at those, inter- the interruptions, introductions. The inter- interrupt- interrupt- introductions? <laughs> It's a Friday. It's, it's Friday. A Friday. <laughs> Thank you. Production. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for coming, Sean. Uh, just remind everyone that we are on uh, YouTube live at youtube.com slash Zen Kimchi. Every f- yeah, we try to do it on Fridays around 730. We get started. Uh, and you can, um, we also have a Patreon. It's uh, patreon.com slash soul podcast. You can donate and keep the show going and we have free ex- we have extras for you okay. if you donate anyway um <laughs> sean uh how long have you uh tell us a little bit about yourself um Jeez. well okay i know it sounds like a, it sounds like a job interview doesn't it self-introduction time <laughs> especially on zoom oh goodness um <laughs> i i moved to korea back in December of 2007. So uh-huh. I think similar to Emma's timeline. And mm-hmm. I've been here, yeah, ever since. Um, yeah, threw myself into kind of like the whole media world. So similar to you guys. And just been doing that whole freelance thing. And also, um, yeah, just exploring the whole kind of like expat world, world of ideas, world of just, you know, um, just kind of like covering th- things based on like, I guess, like whatever kind of like uh, job or project we're on, like it kind of focuses uh, the kind of lens that we put on. So sometimes it's like really newsy. Sometimes it's really featurey. Sometimes it's more like entertainment. Sometimes it's more um, just kind of like your own personal projects. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing something that, is really tough to do. Your blog works a bit like a magazine and that's really tough to keep content going, getting the content going. And you have really interesting content and do you have uh, the YouTube channel, which is uh, really, really good. Um, mm-hmm. And so, wow. I mean, it's gotta be tough coming up with so much content. I mean, do you have a team with you? No, I just do it on my own. I mean, wow. that, there was a lot of experimentation um, before. Like when I first started, I guess, in in kind of like a startup way, that was like in 2016, like when I joined a startup center. Uh-huh, yeah. So I tried to do a... Um, a system where it was like, let's try to do, like focus on like kind of political commentary Mm-hmm. Sort of like like the today sh- uh what do you call it like the the what are, uh, trevor noah thing the daily show the daily, the daily show, show. <laughs> and then um so we looked at that and i think that was a little bit too maybe like too forward but it was a good timing because it was uh just basically covering the president park uh impeachment Oh, wow. And then um, I was like, yeah, but then like basically it's it's too niche, like, you know, Korean politics and English. So then I was like, OK, then let's try like Korean entertainment news. And I was able to partner with a guy who owns Dispatch. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to create like a TV show in English. Uh, and 
basically what he was pitching was essentially like access to like def- basically like the Korean newsrooms and like the video, the audio content and even the text content. Um, and then we would just like convert it into English and then create our own shows. And so we did about like 30 episodes of that, but it just didn't work. We were trying to do it too backwards. And he he's more from the kind of like blog, kind of like gossip rag world. And he wasn't in from the TV world. So he just kind of didn't understand like the cost of production from TV mm-hmm. is so different from just like throwing something on the um, internet. 30 episodes mm-hmm. is pretty good though. That's That's a lot of work. It was a lot, a lot of, it was almost a, it was an impossible like task that, yeah, that we undertook. That was yeah. kind of crazy. And I don't see, I, I've been, I've been fixing people a lot in, in what I do because uh, I've worked with entrepreneurs and so you don't, people don't have failed biz- businesses. They don't have failed projects. They have finished business and finished <laughs> projects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a experiment that we tried out it's um, done so. we learned something from it there we go yeah definitely yeah speaking definitely. of which it's uh, what is the, what are our drinks of the week i still don't have a a, a jump uh, you need to get that the I, little need, thing I need to get that. a jingle for that one do we have drinks? Now we do it. <laughs> oh i'm drinking my usual oh, my little oh. cute doggy wine <laughs> <laughs> I just John, realized how that sounded. <laughs> I sort of stopped Done. drinking so it's water and coffee. It's good yeah, on yeah. you. Good on you. I, I stopped drinking for a year, but not today. Um, oh. I am back to doing uh, my favorite Korean brewery right now is uh, Playground. And this is the Joker, the Joker Pale Ale. Pretty good stuff. I can't believe I get this in my local... All over the keyboard. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> All right. Uh, trying to get the sound going. And let's see. So uh, Sean kind of suggested that we do mukbang. And I don't think he, he meant that we do it on tonight's episode, but we're going to do it on tonight's episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you sent me the message earlier and i was like well i i have plans for dinner at you know but you guys are more than welcome that's to eat. fine because i saw that you did a little you did a mukbang with some fruit expensive fruit oh right yeah that was ridiculous about <laughs> yeah i just wanted to show how ridiculous some of the prices are unnecessary oh the prices the fruit prices are nuts uh domestic yeah. fruit yeah imported fruit yeah. is not so bad well let's see i got so what i did because mukbang when you do a mukbang you gotta you gotta have the food at level so i, I got me um i got oh, me a we're box not doing oh <laughs> well, we're my... doing it for real i was just Kind of it's it there. Simple. Eat. <laughs> <Just like. laughs> I don't know how well it looks. I'm not sure if you can see my head. After. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> I think you should really do this for real. Like, this is your thing. Like, you're the, you're the, food <laughs> the thing. You is, I the hate, food guy, I hate, I don't like mukbang. So that's why I don't do it. I, the reason I don't like mukbang is the looks people have when they're doing it. Have you seen a lot, especially the ASMR mukbangs? They look yeah. like they're zombified. Yeah. They look like it really does look like a dirty sexual fetish. And I just, is not and, my and thing. They, they amp it up that way. And I think people are sort of going there for that sort of sensory experience. I mean, I get ASMR. I, I, I discovered ASMR back in 2015, but I'm, I'm more of the ones where, where, um, you know, the, the people whisper in one ear and whisper in another ear and they do that cranial exam thing mm. and, or they clean your, they pretend to clean your ears. Yeah. 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 Which cool. set, when I first, when I first did that and I did that and I was like, Oh wow, that sounds real. <laughs> it sounds like they're really cleaning my ears. Uh, and uh, that was kind of cool. But the food thing is just, um, it's, it's just, it's it's, yeah, it's like all the stuff mom told me not to not do. 
But you can make it like less ASMR. -y. You can just. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't want to do ASMR. I was going to call my daughter. Let me see if I'll get my daughter. I'll, 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 I'll text her. I don't want From to the other that. room. Yeah, I'll text her in the other room. Hey, uh, Gian. Gian's very cool. I like her. Gian. She, uh, okay. she bombed our New Year's Eve. <laughs> I know. How do you say that? Video podcast bombed our New Year's Eve party? Yeah. <laughs> so she's going to teach you how to do it like the way the young kids do it? Yeah, I don't know. She just wanted to eat more chicken. They already had some, but I got this. I got from um, Yukshipke. Oh, there she is. is. She's like, oh, She's like, oh, She's she wants a box. Yeah, this is the 60K, which means uh, they change the oil after every 60 fries of chicken, which is a, it's the oh, trend wow. that's going around. Uh, uh, Baran Duck, Duck also does that, where oh. Baran Duck uh, gives you the the number of how many fries it is since they changed the oil. So I went and got um, some basic ones. I got... Um, on the top, we have uh, the regular fried chicken. Yum, yum. And something called ganji chicken, which I guess is like a maybe like a honey chicken type of thing, spicy oh. honey. And then this is this is the this mm. is the really tricky one they've done. Oh, let me open this one up. You can tell it's a little messy. Oh, this is their their jajang, the jajang oh, chicken. Wow. You can't even <laughs> see it. It looks like oil, but it's like it's it's chicken and black bean sauce, just like. At a Korean Chinese place. Wow. And I we're going to try to eat this. Um, and I got, ask Sean questions. Oh my God. It's, <laughs> it's all MSG. And, and I got my, I got my chopsticks for this. Oh my goodness. And oh my we're going to see, we're going to get this. Jan, you're going to eat? I had oh, no idea this was going to happen. <laughs> oh my God. Here, here we go. Here we go. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Mm. See, I think you're good at this. You're natural. <laughs> no, I got bones. When was it bones? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, okay. Mm. Is it not this good? No, I got bones. I don't know where I'm going to put my bones. I can get it. Mm. You just realized he didn't have a. He doesn't have a bone trash can. I don't. I don't have a bone bucket. Oh my god, this really does look like an ASMR show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you you brought the box. The box is key. Like the eye line level, like that's that is the first and last step. Yeah, that's the There we go. She got it. I want to do it with you sometime. Jan, you want to get a chair or something? Come in here. Uh, Join me. Right. So Sean and the Soul Light. <laughs> I feel like I feel track. like I've sold out. I've sold out, man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. Wow. Go for it. What are you, what are you eating, Chad? <laughs> yeah. This is an apple because I was waiting for the pizza. Because uh -huh. I wanted to eat something very simple. Mm hmm. Sorry, guys. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I. <laughs> I was gonna do it, but then earlier after I got mm. home, my friend was like, "Hey, do you want to meet me over at this yeah. restaurant near our house for dinner <laughs> after you finish your podcast?" I was like, "Yeah, sure." So yeah, but this, this allows Emma to kind of talk and keep the conversation going because I thought mm -hmm. like you know three people like three people can't speak at once and um, yeah. mm -hmm. it keeps each frame busy mm -hmm. so that like when people are watching yeah. there's like a lot to watch on the screen and it's like, mm. interesting. I got you. You got your thing going. going. Mm. Oh yeah, Sean. What? Other Sean over on the chat says, "Oh no, gross is the word you're looking for, Joe." Sean hates <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> mm. I think it's the bones. Mm. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not doing any chopsticks. Mm. Maybe maybe chicken was not the best. <laughs> I thought the chicken would be the most decadent thing to do. Hmm. Oh, just well, let all me us, figure out. All this fails. I did. I did bring dessert. <laughs> I I got me a, a, a well. Now it fell in the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> a crispy sn Snickers. <laughs> they make it crispy now. Yeah. Wow. Wait, really? Yeah. That's like a rice crispy Snickers. Thing, or is that an American thing. 
I think it's I think it's American that came over to Korea. Wow. It's a ritual I do every Friday now is I get I get my beers and I get some candy bars because this is my cheat day. All right, I like right. the regular and he's Friday. He's usually sneaking bites of the candy bars while we're filming. Mm-hmm. Mm. Where I, I'm like off camera trying to pour more wine into my glass. So she, Gian actually watches these things. She actually watches mukbang, so she knows what she's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. She knows what she's, 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 she's gonna teach everybody how to do a proper mukbang. No, she's Gen Z. There's a new word for that. Gen I think a new word for your generation. Gen Z. She passed up. They call it like Gen we're Alpha now. Yeah, they're doing Alpha. Is that it? We're gonna go back to A. That's it. Because my That's brother, my brother's Gen Z, but he's like twenty five. Oh really? Because yeah. okay, they've well, been calling like people millennials like, like for fifty years. I know it's it's really fun because they like to complain about us. It's like you do know that a good portion of us are like almost forty or forty or almost forty exactly. now, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm a millennial. I'm a um, millennial and. I'm a getting so close to 40. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, my brother was 96. And so I was under the impression that 90s. I think it was like nine from 90. He was born in 96. Ish. Yeah. That that was gen. That was like the start of Gen Z. Like, wow. Cause that's the generation that the, his generation is like the first generation that grew up only knowing like internet and iPhones. And okay. And, and so Gian, Gian's the generation that grew up with tablets. In fact, I mean, she had a tablet when she was one year old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. So My brother. Like yeah. She knows mm-hmm. she, she's the one, she's one of those kids that when you gave her a book, she started, she's like, why is it not doing anything? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I heard why that, can't I swipe? that did that to magazines as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like I think my brother was what? Mm, yeah, he was a one years old when we first got like internet at the house. So he doesn't know what life is like. He never knew what life was like without the without internet. <laughs> and he had his first phone in like elementary school, whereas I was like senior year of high school when I finally got my first cell phone. Mm-hmm. And it was one of those like little Nokia phones. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't allowed to text because texting cost extra. Yeah, like 10 cents of text. Yeah. It's like I think that's what divides millennials and Gen Z. Because like we were we remember what life was like before internet. Because mm. uh, we were all around like middle school or high school, depending on the age when internet became the thing or when actually when it first came out <laughs> yeah and then became the thing this is really good so yeah, yeah yeah i've always heard that um yeah millennials are like 80 to 90 or something like that yeah okay i was and born then everything i was born on the cusp, is i was X. born in late gen x and I'm, I, I actually, I, I identify more with millennials. I, I identify a lot with millennials more than Gen X in many ways. Well, I mean, the thing <clears> with like, the generation things, they're constantly like changing and moving and it depends yeah. on who you talk to. Because- I'm in this Generation X group on Facebook and they annoy the crap out of me. It's My just mom so is much, Gen X. It's just nostalgia. It's just it's nostalgia porn. And I get, I get a little tired of it at times. It's like, okay. That was fun, but can can some of us like grow out of our childhoods a bit? We're not. <laughs> Just move on. No. no. And kids, and, and, and that's what it is. It, it's become a get off my lawn group. Kids these days, oh, yeah, dude. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Kids this day. I get your it. Tablet. Yeah, but they're TikTok. <laughs> your tablet. Yeah. You're t- Pop it. Yeah, they're poppets. I yeah. Still don't know how to Slime. Use- I still don't know how to use TikTok. She does. She knows. She knows how to use TikTok. Dion, will you teach me how to use TikTok? Will you teach how to do TikTok? No. Okay. All right. I'll figure it out. I'm a smart woman. I'll figure it out. <laughs> That's not that hard. I figured it out. Yeah. 
Uh, Sean says you're better than Mukbang Emma. Yes, I. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he refuses to grow out of his childhood. I think that was meant to be sarcastic, right? No, Sean is always a kid. Sean, Sean is I just going to be stuck listening to. Um, I want to dance with somebody who loves me. Okay, Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> not it's not a bad song if you want to get stuck on i guess <laughs> i want to dance with my cat she wants to dance with her cat yeah right. now that we've gotten like way off <laughs> we're way off i wanted to we ask you about some of your stuff because i really wanted to ask you about your lawsuit with the government oh god ah! <laughs> Well, yeah, if, if you don't you want, want to talk, talk about it, that's if fine. You don't but you're going to give that, we don't have to. We're going to give all of our listeners blue balls if you don't. Now that we mentioned it. <laughs> well, what do you want to know? Yeah, well, what did you sue them for? <laughs> hmm, that's very interesting. Mm. Um, because there is, I guess, two different ways to answer that question. One is like. Why did you sue? So, like, what did you sue them for? Like, under what concept? Mm -hmm. And what did you sue them for, as in, like, what did you sue them for specifically under the line item of the law? Yeah. Which looks really different. And then how long well, before they said, get away from a silly foreigner? <laughs> it, the whole process took about, like, four years. It was kind of ridiculous. Mm. Dear Lord. My, my, my lawsuit almost lasted that long. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, so basically like it was it was like an unjust firing and it's a labor board I issue? I don't really know like what was like it was kind of like one of those things where like I don't know I don't know I don't know uh, I don't really exactly want to compare it to this, but I did understand after this happened like, you know, if you just get kind of um fired without cause unexpectedly and due to kind of like a political machination mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. kind of like a shell shocked and you don't know exactly what happened so then i was just like oh this is like kind of like when somebody says like um i didn't exactly report immediately like a, a like a sexual assault because i don't know exactly like what it was or like but i think it was that and now i'm sure it was like when somebody mm -hmm. says that i was like oh, okay now i and i get that feeling now because um that's how it was with that i was like okay now i could see like it wasn't just an ordinary thing because other people were saying like well it's just the kind of ordinary you know kind of a thing it's just like a job thing like you know um like it's just a, a reshuffle. A reshuffle. So you're working you're working for a media outlet and you suddenly lost your job. And it was a political thing. Yeah. Uh yeah. It, yeah. Um basically so you vote yeah, for the wrong person. Like, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask dumb questions. Yeah, that's I'm important. laughing because I I know you told me about this when it happened and I also know stuff about that place. So yeah. Exactly. So I it was, was like, like doesn't surprise it was, me. It's basically crazy. So basic, so essentially like what that showed me was like, okay, so it's a lot of uh, it's open to abuse of power. So they can do whatever they want. Um essentially. Is, it, is so this a place where, where it's Korea for the world? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so okay. After about a year, the leader of that organization who was, you know, basically like a parachute appointee by um, the Blue House got into a lot of trouble. You know, he basically was uh, oh! ordered into a resignation because of some uh, scandal with finances and, uh, and prostitutes. Things, you know, just things you can look it up on your own. And, and I thought like, wow, yeah, that just confirms in my mind that there's some sort of real line that's being crossed, I think, in Korean society and in general with like management of public institutions. That oh, yeah. Nice. Okay. I think I know what you're talking about. What year was this? 2016 is when he got in trouble. 2015 is when I got fired. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was caught up in that. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. I was fired too. 
See, I got fired See? from the same company in 2011. But we all knew it was just, for, it was just political stuff. And that guy, that guy was reason. hated. That guy was so hated. See, so the thing is, is that like nobody does anything about that. And it it does kind of like create chaos in a lot of people's lives, a lot of people's families. Yeah. Like we were the only ones, but I was really surprised looking around me like nobody did anything. Mm -hmm. Like the more that you don't do anything, the easier it is for them to just do this. And then really, if you don't do anything, why are you complaining? Like, why is that? Yeah, that's true. That is true. That's right. what I don't get is people who complain, but don't do anything. So, and I understood, and then now after doing all of this, I understand why people are not always in a position to do, do something. But I was like, well, I have to do something about it. And I always wanted to see what it was like to do a lawsuit just in general. And then oh. it was like justice in the justice department mm -hmm. justice in the system. And I also wanted to really draw a line in the sand and not ever be tempted to go back to that organization after being treated that way. So mm -hmm. I knew by doing this, like suing them, I would never go back there. Burn that bridge. Exactly. And why but not the thing is, they change personnel so many times you can go back and they'll be like, oh, yeah, who are you? But structurally, that can always happen. Like after I mm -hmm. read that, like structurally, that can always happen. And like, in a way, like I kind in my personal, you know, um, way of interacting with the world, I, to a certain extent, sometimes I maybe enjoy it when like somebody who gets what they're, they deserve gets what they deserve. But in general, I'd rather the system be fixed. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like, I'd rather have the system be the culprit, like the system, take the blame, the system be improved. And if the system is not going to be improved, then you're all, you're just going to be vulnerable again, no matter who's in there. Exactly. And it doesn't matter if like that dude gets punished, he's gone. He's, he's somewhere else. And yeah. it's not going to change their life tomorrow if he gets punished because the next guy can do the same thing. Yeah. And, and they do. And that's, that's always how they do it, is every time they switch people, uh, that's how they make their mark is they get rid of everything their predecessor had done and then they do their thing. And then it goes back around. Next person does it. Yeah. And it's the circle of life. It's just the same and thing. Who's the idiot that, that keeps getting the same, um, you know, bashing on the head if you stay there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to be me. People who and stay there, yeah. man, I, they, they, I don't know how they do it. They really keep their their heads low. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, so then this is this is wrong. So then um, I was urged by some other people who were like, you know, some kind of like some people we interviewed before. They were like real kind of like social justice kind of professors of law. And they're like, yeah, maybe you should do a lawsuit. Um, I have a protege. He has a law firm. Like, oh, OK. So you made some connections. OK. And then I was like, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. But then I was and then I just took a meeting. I was like, OK, maybe like if we did it, like, what would it be? And then it was just like such a big learning experience because mm -hmm. what you think you can sue for is not like what you actually do sue for. So mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly what I would be suing for. I just knew like this is just wrong. So then mm -hmm. what do you sue for? And so I thought like, well, do you sue for like this is like um, like you didn't make a contract like you have these verbal contracts but even if you sue for a verbal contract the penalty is like a thousand dollars it's really it's really so what in my mind is basically the foundation of abuse of power it's basically kind of like a nothing so you don't even target that so then um they're basic they're also saying like you can't target anything if you're not even classified as a regular employee as long as you're classified as a, a contract freelancer, then nothing in the labor laws protect you. You have no protection. They're trying to change that, but nothing protects you. Right. Well, Which actually, that, yeah. 
Yeah, and a lot of people who were employed with this company were employed. No, I don't. I don't know anyone. Really barely anyone is is actually employed. I mean, you got to be getting health care and stuff like that if you're actually. An I mean, employee. after after all of this, like it has changed where like people have gotten to be more protected. So I feel oh like good it some mm-hmm. sort of you know impact, but. Um, so then, like, you have to figure out, like, you know, how you structured this lawsuit. And it was the craziest, like, kind of, like, mental gymnastics. We had to sue. The way that we had what we sued for was that we had to sue that we were actually regular employees, but the company pretended we were not. So we were trying I can see to how you do that. You, you can totally do that. Because the a so contractor a contractor yeah. can make their own hours, but if someone's requiring you to come check in at a certain time and leave at a certain time, then you're an employee. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have like these parameters that you're supposed to uh, meet and prove, mm-hmm. and uh, once you prove that with the judge. Then I was just like, oh, then do we have to fight and prove that they did all this bad stuff? And then they're like, no, because this case is so obvious that you're all protected. And then you basically win. Um, I was like, what? That's it? And so it sounded easy. There's no drama, too. Reasonable. Um, and basically, what would you win? You basically get um, your uh, the pay from the moment you got unjustly fired. And then uh, plus interest. And then Ooh, if that's you good. Your, job back, your job back. So I was like, well, this is a pretty good gamble. And then I had some sort of like litigation insurance. I was like, well, okay, it's not going to really cost me that much. And if this is like a learning experience and if this is like basically sort of like could be a financially rewarding experience as well, then why not? Let's try. Also, let's put some, you know, stance out there that people are mm-hmm. willing to take a stand and say like this bad behavior is unacceptable and people are willing to challenge you on it so that's what I, we did i like the cut of your jib i was like that <laughs> i did that so i, I would do? still do that if i had the resources yeah. yeah keep going i'm enjoying this i'm enjoying this well then, what, do you, what else do you want to know? Well, I mean, okay, like, so you did it. So, so you did you succeed? So actually, we did not. And oh, um, no. so, to cut the long story short, we did um, appeal. So we went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Oh, you so, went to the Supreme Court. I didn't get that high. Oh, that's I did why appeal it took a lot. Right. It took it took uh, took a long time, but then you get to see well, what learning experience. Sure, uh, you get to see like the the tricks that. Um, if the other side is on the losing end, like what they will do to win. Yes. And Mm -hmm. so, uh, one, one, um, tactic is to extend it as long as possible. to Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Each time the, the judge sees you, it could be like a three month interval, but, um, let's, it's sort of like a group homework assignment. Right. And so then by the next, uh, time they meet, uh, we go to the judge, we're supposed to have like done a back and forth of like the questions. Like you say, you know, you're accusing us of this on paper and we're accusing you of this on paper. So we're both going to respond, but it's like your um, partner doesn't respond until the night before you see the judge. So then when you go see the judge, you're like, Oh, they just turned their homework in. So we need another like three month extension. Mm-hmm. What yep. Should have taken three months now take six months. Yep. So mm-hmm. that's how they extended out like the time period. The dirty tactics. And then what they did is like really harp on like um, one area where they feel like they can uh, win and divert all the focus there. And I guess also, I think, you know, what at that point you just kind of like work, I guess, your other back channels or something. Cause like, I was just like this, like in a legal sense, like we had a very strong case. There was a lot of past precedent already that was in our favor, Mm -hmm. especially even in a media company, like other media. I mean, people were like, oh my God, you're like so first in doing this. And it was like, no, actually our lawyer looked it up. There was like 
And they were like, oh, you're like a foreigner. That's why you're doing this. You know, like you're taking a stand. Korean people don't do this. I was like, no, Korean people, ah, Korean people have done this. All <laughs> Korean people do it. Korean people you know, do it. So, but they, they so get such like, passive interns there. They don't do anything. <laughs> so anyway, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah. so they were like, yeah, so they've done it. And um, I was like, so, so legally, this is a very strong case. It's very highly likely, like we would win. But... I forgot that actually by suing this company because it's an extension of a, the Korean government, I was essentially suing like the Republic of Korea and yeah. all of it. You're suing yeah. the propaganda arm of the public Republic of Korea. <laughs> More or less. So, uh, right. So they're not going to go down without a battle. And no. Yeah. So that's, that's the thing. And then like, you know, my aunt was just like, you know what, like, don't even try, don't even bother because like, unless you can give the judge like their kid a job, or if your lawyer is not trading cases where like, they're going to give you a win in exchange for a loss on a different mm -hmm. case, then forget about it. You see how this oh. is done. It's like, Oh, it's so bad. It's, it, it is, how I won't, I won't say organic, but but how malleable the system is. Yeah, and then I was just like, oh wow, we're like all of this is not even for like the actual cases. It's like mm. really, and then um, even just the way that we were supposed to approach, like how we wrote the the documents that we were supposed to turn to the judge. Like the judge only wants 30 pages or less. He wants it in this format. Oh, and boy. also like they it's don't all in like HWP. overturning like um, the, the, the decision of the lower court because it affects their promotion. And I'm just oh, like, geez. wow, I'm so glad that like, we're doing all of this for, you know, the careers of these, you know, few people who work in this building that all the taxpayers <laughs> are paying for. Like, I'm really glad that we're doing all of this for their, you know, fun and To help you get a promotion. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I'm really glad that like, you know, they get to do all of this, you know, Playtime and like, the, like what? There's like no point in the law. Sounds like the prosecution's not the only thing that needs an overhaul. So, but we all so knew that. <laughs> were you still able to go come away with your idealism intact? That's a big question. Um, yeah, I. Um, in a weird way, I think. Yes, because I think you get to see like the law for what it is. Like after a while, I thought like, okay, so like the law is sort of like, you remember that experiment they made in like Utah or Arizona? They tried to make that biosphere. Yeah, I remember the biosphere. So then I was like, that's what the law is. It's like you're trying to recreate a world. <laughs> that's paper. such a great analogy. And everything you put in there, a human had to put in there and like predict. And it's like mm -hmm. so not precise. No, I, I, and I think I think a lot of us growing up in America where everything, especially if you live in a big city like New York, which I didn't grow up with that, but you're, you, there's rules for everything. And, and everyone says, you know, anytime anyone gets in trouble, they say, well, well, the, well, this is the law. And the law says this anytime anyone does anything. And then when you actually get in the system, I, I tell you this, um, I got in trouble with the law before I came to Korea. And my first lawyer um, really was not good. I got another lawyer and he was able to get me off because he's fishing buddies with the judge. Exactly. So it's not as if it doesn't happen anywhere else and especially America. Oh, dear no. Lord. Small town. Small town. Yeah. The, you know, Everybody knows everyone. Yeah. It's not any, it's not any better. And, and then, yeah. About. And Korea too. It, it is. I really admire people who really try to challenge the system. Mm -hmm. I really do. Uh, I try to do it too. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm st I, I still, I would still say I, I'm not, I'm not. I've still tried to hold on to my idealism. I'm not cynical, but now I'm a little more, 
I'll have a little more clarity about what's involved if you want to do it. As in, I kind of want to do it again, but I want to be well funded this time. <laughs> exactly. And you know, like how to uh, play this game for what it is mm -hmm. and that it, it is a game and it's not necessarily about a justice. And like, you kind of have to know like what it's used for. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's used for. So if you are a criminal and you're trying to negotiate down a sentence, that's, I think, where the justice system really works its best. Like that's the mm -hmm. magic. that's where it's mm -hmm. really well, like a well-worn shoe. But if you kind of go in there trying to make a point about like, this is wrong. And like, you know, this is like how the world should be like, that's actually the wrong platform for it. And so I kind of like, I definitely saw that. Um, yeah. Yeah, for what that was. Um, but at gonna, the same time, it kind of made me uh, feel like if only criminals use it, then it's just going to be fine tuned for the criminal element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I've been trying to explain this to um, my friend. I, I work for his startup and it's from Silicon Valley and he's doing and the thing with it, with him, well, things have gone slowly because. Even though he's Korean American, he still he still won't see it the Korean way. And I, I keep trying to explain to him: you got to do it the Korean way, not the Silicon Valley way, if you want to get things through. Oh, and 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 we can't change the system now, but later on, when we have a when we have footing and we have a little bit of capital in many ways, so, you know, political and economic capital and clout maybe we could start shifting the the culture and you know shifting the things in a different way but right now we're we're beholden to the people that want us to have okay okay you know an example we're just trying to get some basic a basic government loan that everyone's getting and we don't understand why we're doing it wrong so we're going through so many ways to get points so what we did is we converted our office into a research lab. We actually got certified as a research lab this week. Guess who the head researcher is? Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a head researcher. Um, I'm a scientist and now. What what do you research? Stop. Well, you know what? Stuff. I just yeah, exactly. Stuff. What's funny? Stuff. What's what's funny is that in 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 our binder that 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 gave us the approval for the research lab was a, a printout of my diploma that I haven't seen in twenty years, and I just read that I I have a BA in communications and information science. I did not know oh. I had a BA in information science. So technically. Perfect. I'm a science. I'm a scientist, mm. but I have a BA in science. Yeah. <laughs> I think well, that's kind of funny. Ooh, wait, no, but I have. I actually have a bachelor of science in journalism. Well, there you, you go. So I could technically be a science student. Well, actually, I do a lot of fact checking and research for my job. So, so you took you took so you took statistics. Is that why you yeah, took the I BS did. degree? Wait, see, seriously, I, is that how I is that how I got it? Because I took statistics. I, I'm just saying. I think BS is like you got a little more math, and I got the BA because I took more history courses. I had one math class. Statistics. Okay. Statistics. And and then I took a. Uh, physical science and then i clepped out of bio the science 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 so i mean i, I took anyway, one science class and i got the credit for, I my point is is all this weird stuff we're doing we're i'm, I'm, I'm finally we've been in business we've been around for a year now and we're finally getting around to like okay we got to do it the korean way if we're going to get anything done for now and so we're doing it and it, it, it is really silly the stuff we have to do as a startup as a startup we have no, especially in startup that that whole that whole like um world is like controlled by the bureaucratic mafia because that's where all the money is coming from that's a good and word mm -hmm. just need to figure out like what will get them a promotion so yes. they're looking to hit their benchmarks and their targets so they want to have like R and D. Yep, and that's what we are. 
an R and D thing. And then there's something personal, like, you know, they want to have a meeting or drinks. I don't know, like take them out. That's what I've been pushing for is that we try to ambush them at a, at, at wherever they're going out drinking or something like that. Looking into that. I'm always for the guerrilla tactics. Or can't you just call them and invite them? Isn't that? Well, that's the thing is we actually know people pretty high in the government and they were kind of surprised that the people lower in the government were cock blocking us the whole way. One thing was at first I was temporary CEO and that caused issues. Even though I'm an F5, I'm basically one step away from being a citizen and, and I even vote (laughs) <laughs> and we went over to one of the government offices and I'm, I went with, I went with the guy who is the real CEO and, but he hadn't had his visa wasn't ready yet. Um, and, and our, our business manager and you were talking the whole time. And then, and he's like, Oh yeah, this is great. We're going to give you some money. And then, and then they said, they, he said, who's the CEO? And I raised my hand and his face went. Hmm. Oh, why? <laughs> Oh, because you're already, was it for foreigners or something? Or? Uh, no, it's because, no, technically foreigners are supposed to get it or are valid for it too. He just, but he, he saw this and he was like, ah, yeah, we can't help you. Oh, it was for non Caucasian people? No, it was, it technically it was for anyone who had a visa in Korea or Korean nationals, but. Uh, when he saw that the for- there was a foreign CEO or a non-Korean looking CEO, he changed his mind <laughs> and said no. Oh, right. Because, uh, yeah, if, well, then that, mm, I don't. Yeah, I know. Like- that's one thing you could make a lawsuit about, but not going to fight that. Eh, that's not worth oh, it. Right. Well, there's no discrimination laws, right? Can't. Yeah, we don't have that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, no, yeah, well, technically, no, uh, non non discrimination law. Yeah, technically, an F five visa, you're supposed to be treated pretty much as a citizen, except you can't vote in presidential elections. So, I could fight it if I wanted to. I mean, I have the same thing with the banks that deny me credit cards and housing loans, uh, because I'm a flight risk. <laughs> The fact that when you go in to get your visa renewed. Well, I don't get my visa renewed because I'm in F5. No, but I still have to. And a lot of times it really just depends, especially with all the new changes they've made with with the F visas. It really just kind of comes down to, I've had friends on the point system visa. I mean, I understand. And like one person was like, oh no, this doesn't count as points. But anyway, that was not Whatever. the point. That was not supposed to be the point of this podcast. I apologize. Yeah, anyway, I mean, I, I, mean, I'm not, I don't complain. I, I, I'm not going to fight too much because, you know, I realize I do have a lot of privileges in many ways. So if I was, everyone was going to fight it, it was going to be for people who don't have as much privilege if, if it makes a change for them. Mm. Mm. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> We can we go off on so many tangents on this podcast. I'm so sorry, Sean. Um, we, do. <laughs> we, do. we do. That's okay. I thought I was ADD, but yeah. Oh no, yeah. I've actually been diagnosed with ADD from a person who wrote the book on ADD. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but but, but, it is but, actually, but I mean, it's, mm-hmm. but I, I really this is this is what I love your stuff. Uh, in fact, we we were referring to your stuff on previous shows. Mm-hmm. Oh. In previous podcasts, yeah, when yeah, we were so, talking so about our, certain topics, our, our our two audience members know who you are. Oh uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> what were you talking about? What was it? It was about oh, it was about the was it about the the, the foreigners being required to get? Uh, oh yeah, tested? we referred to your video on the the Gyeonggi Province order. Oh, that was it. That was really good. Mm-hmm. That oh, was a wow. great video. Like this government, I mean, yeah, unexpectedly, the Liberal Party. Oh, that was it. Because because yeah, you, you, you were going party. further. You were going further on 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 my little. Bonnie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, my little hypothesis that in Korea, left is right and right is left. Because it, it, it is. 
Yeah. I said this to a, a professor we used to have on one of my, by the way, we used to be on morning special. I used to, so that was a cool thing. Um, there was once a week we had this political science professor on morning special. And, and while we we're off the air, I said, it's kind of funny, right is left and left is right in Korea. And he goes, yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so, but, but you went deeper and you were exploring a little bit more about like, why does the Korean left tend to have what outside Korea would be more right wing xenophobic tendencies? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think uh, if you want to yeah, delve down into it, it makes a little bit more sense. But when people kind of just stop a little bit at the current policies, like yes. the current progressive policy mm -hmm. and what's the current right wing policy and then make the assumption there and mm -hmm. then also make a, a current assumption of like, where's your political alignment, whether with it's with the U.S. or with like what it seems like to be with North Korea. Mm -hmm. And then that kind of like puts you into a mental schema that you can't get out of. Yeah. You, what I, call, I call those the surface issues. You look at the surface, but there's a deeper really, reasons like, why they, they go this really way. Think about like it. And that's like looking at it from an, uh, an outsider. But then if you really look at it from like the person who actually holds those beliefs as a Korean person, you really see it. It's a, basically a civil war, you know, Korean against Korean. And mm. once you look at it, like why do Korean people fight each other? Then it starts to make sense of like, oh, okay, they're aligning oh. to these different power um, it goes. Groups. It goes back to the early Joseon dynasty. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's your catchphrase. It and does. That's, I feel it like does. it, it sounds dark... like a catchphrase, but he actually does have like the facts to back it up. But I feel like a lot of times we'll say something is like, "It goes back to the Joseon dynasty." It goes like, well, with well, Dark Side of Soul podcast. Does. We of course it I'm, does. Grudges. <laughs> People will not let it go, and that's sad. That that mm -hmm. actually has resonance because. What should have been resolved continues on. It continues. It's also regional. A lot of things are regional. It is still, we're still fighting Bekche versus Sheila. We're still, we're still fighting that battle. Give it up. <laughs> we're still doing that. But I've been, I, okay, I'm playing with this thing and I'm going to do it on Dark Side sometime is I think a lot of the left's xenophobic tendencies is rooted in the Donghak rebellion, the Donghak movement of the 19th century, in which it was an it was a anti uh monarchy. It was and so it was like monarchy is causing all of our problems. And at the same time the monarchy is kissing up to all these foreign powers. So we hate all the monarchy's friends. So we hate all these foreigners. <laughs> we hate the Japanese, we hate the Chinese, we hate the Germans, the Americans, the British. We don't want them in our country because they're all screwing us up. And I, I'm, I'm playing with this idea that that's where the root of it comes from. Mm. You know. Yeah, I mean, that, that definitely that could have uh, a way to come down intellectually it's a hypothesis i'm just playing with it I'm, I'm still working for the i'm still looking for the connection between now and the 19th century i'm still working well on probably it. the independence movement is a, is a bridge between. the independence mm -hmm. movement is really interesting too um yeah yeah it has a little bit of roots okay so so the dong hak splintered as it always does because there's factions if there's anything that's consistent in korea is we'll, we're going to splinter into factions and micro factions we're going to just splinter oh yeah both both major parties are currently doing that right now so i can it, attest to from the articles i edited today yeah, it was the dong hak <laughs> and they split off in these factions and split off in these factions split on these factions after 1905 and then they 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 sort of came together in 1910, um, and and the 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 impetus of that was the death of King Kojong, and and they knew everyone was going to be in town for his funeral, and that's why they did the whole the uh, March first movement, and uh, it's really interesting. I, the more I'll tell you this. The, the more I study this, the more fascinated I am by it, because I see the rhythms in here is the rhythms of humanity. I think I see it's such a microcosm of 
of how world history has gone is is how 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 the how how the especially the Joseon era just just how it went in in these peaks and valleys and I'm 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 I'm, I'm rambling. Stop me from rambling. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fascinating. Good point. <laughs> point <I'm made>. rambling. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, but anyway, it, we really like that yeah. one. And we've recently been watching your videos on the Han River death. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah, that's been... How did... Been yeah. Crazy. How did you... Did, was your, that it wasn't an intention of yours to turn it into a series? Or did it just like no. one video turned into another, <laughs> turned into another? Yeah, drama. Yeah, people just were so hungry to know more. And... I felt it was like an obligation to update. But then more than that, it it uh, then really became clear that it was like a watershed moment for Korea as well. Like, I really mm-hmm. do believe that this is a scary moment where like, if you can, if it is the case where you can now cover up this easily, mm-hmm. then what kind of country can you safely live in or comfortably? I, right. I, I think I should give yeah. our listener uh, some background. We're talking about the the mysterious death of a young man on the Han River in the middle of the night. He was, he was found in the Han River. He was missing first, then he was found in the Han River. He was For out drinking days, with a, right? Yeah, he was out drinking with a friend. The f- friend is not a suspect. Officially, from the police, not a suspect, but in the eyes of the Korean public, he is suspect number one. <laughs> and and number one, I, yeah. I think I think and the only. public got upset because. <laughs> see, this is what I, I, I think is funny. Is like it's like the solution to this is they're going to ban drinking on the Han River Park. Yeah, alcohol <laughs> doesn't kill your friends. Just friends that kill you, kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it seemed like it seemed like the way we like to solve problems is we try to come up with. We we we're gonna come up with uh, uh uh like the image that we're solving the problem rather than getting to the Put root of it and actually it. solving the problem. Like you know, like with Puck and Hay, when when um pe- men in her cabinet were were sexually harassing interns on foreign trips. The rule was the new rule was no more interns on foreign trips. Exactly. <laughs> so, so in this case. Uh, a young medical student dies under suspicious circumstances on the Han River while out drinking with a friend. No more drinking at river parks after 10 p.m. Yes, especially you medical students. <laughs> so what's your take on this? I mean, what do you think? Is, what do you think is going on? I really want to hear what, what, what. OK, there's a you think there's a cover up. But who are we protecting if there's a cover up or are we covering up the police's incompetence? <laughs> I don't think the police is that incompetent. Okay. I, I don't, we have a listener um, that will contradict that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Tropic I, Girl. I well, okay. From the, the results that we, to the extent of the results that we've seen, I don't think incompetence uh, explains it 100%. So okay. basically, I'm going to say that mm-hmm. uh, there, it looks like there's some sort of a coordinated cover up. Yeah, because but what? there are there are uh, too many um, indications that there was a a pre planned result that the evidence is being stuffed into, and the evidence itself, the eyewitness testimonies have been shown not to exist, like the key witness number one, who said that they saw the guy who died still alive at 3.38 a.m. may not even exist um, through photographic evidence. Like the person may not exist? Or- and who person who is the witness on the testimony himself. So if they might not exist, then at least, okay, so let's say he does exist. But then where is the double check? Like there's no double checking. That's the problem. Oh, good call. Good call. So yeah. if you're going to say that he did exist and he did say that he did have that uh, that 
he what he said is true. There were tons of other people that you can also ask who were mm-hmm. around. That is the problem here. So they didn't ask that. And then the fishermen who were so dubious with their claims saying that, oh, we think we saw somebody go swimming at 4.40 a.m. saying how refreshing this Han River is. Okay, let's just, <laughs> let's just say that they were, <laughs> they were 83 meters away. There were at least 11 other groups so that there's at least tw- two dozen more people closer to the scene of the action who you could ask for corroborating testimonies, nothing. So there's no double checking here. Also the taxi that the guy went in, they said there was no black box in that taxi. Seoul passed the law in 2013 requiring all taxis to have black boxes. Okay, so let's say there is no black box in that taxi. Couldn't you have double checked with the CCTV cameras on the street? There's no, all this triangulation Uh, we've set up. There's no triangulation. And then also CCTVs mysteriously disappearing that would give a clearer picture of the actual site on the riverbank from the bridge. Suddenly, oh, they weren't working that day or they've been put into um, out of order operation or we were going to give it to you. But now, oh, sorry, the deadline is passed and we, it's going into archives and you have to oh, sue us. Gosh. Or there was other CCTVs on the plaza that they said, oh, those don't work anymore because of security uh, privacy issues. But then that uh, documentary show actually had CCTV footage that they used as B-roll in their program. <gasps> the same things. So how are they going to explain that? Oh, my. There's a lot of like inconsistencies that basically looks like there's lying going on here. And... Um, that that only just scratches the surface. So when you have like all of these questions that have like basically like you know when you're just when you're just saying like come on man like you're lying man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the wow. fact that like a lot of these lies came out like as I learned through your videos. It was just like conservative YouTubers were like, we're going to go out and do our own tests. And I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. You could maybe argue on like the scientific level of it. But I mean, they were pretty well thought out tests that they did. Like you can't really argue with a lot of the results that they got, you know, especially the one with like the fishermen. Like could the fishermen have actually heard them? And like doing like with, you know, like, okay, we have people sitting in the places where they were sitting that night and then the fishermen over there and the fact that they couldn't hear, you know, when they were supposed to, I was just, I am, I am like still 100% in on this. I'm like, I need to know these answers. (laughs) And well, and also like with the first rule I learned in journalism school, which I would assume is probably one of the first rules that you would learn if you're going to be an investigator of any sort is, Well, it was a saying that my professor would always tell us, if your mother says she loves you, ask somebody else. Meaning when you do an interview, don't take what they say at face value. You have to corroborate it and back it up. I like that. And so the fact that so much of this was like not corroborated and backed up and it was so easily found out that it wasn't backed up. I was just like. And this is your job. You go to like police academy and investigation courses. And and that's why I was saying like it probably isn't so much incompetence because it's so glaringly uh, mm-hmm. tilted. And even in the police report, they did the mid investigation report where they released it to the public. And the question part where they were saying there's nothing criminal about this looked like it came from Mr. A's lawyers. So it read Mm. very slanted as if it came from a defense lawyer, not a police investigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not to mention, they never even show that they were trying to find some sort of indication or alternatives to what happened that was more on the victim side. And then even with the whole fisherman thing, like the the person who went into the water, they're already assuming that it was him who walked in. But they, even from the fisherman's tale, don't even know whether it was a man or a woman who walked in. Because they were too far away. Yeah. 
And so anybody who was on that riverbank during that time, and now we also see from CCTV footage, there was at least a man and a woman who were there, mm-hmm. who were still alive and walked out of that area. They could have gone swimming. They could have had a refreshing moment. At this point, who knows? It could have been Ariel from The Little Mermaid who came out and said it was refreshing and then swam back into the ocean. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Now we're the refreshing Han though, River. We don't know. It's, yeah. I mean, the one thing that to me seems to be coming clearer is that it was likely not this medical student. Probably not. And they said like, oh, it's normal for people to go swimming. It's illegal what? to go swimming. It's yeah. illegal to swim yeah. at river parks. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. How often do drunk people just like jump in the river? Does it, is that Never. a thing that happens often? No, Never. I didn't. Know. It's scary and disgusting. And how are you going to get out of it? You know, they're not. It, they don't make have, it easy to get have, in or have, out of that. We have flood barriers. You can't get out. Right. Uh, no, uh, right. I'm playing with this. This is one of my little pet projects I did this week. I have this. I found this really cool high res map of Seoul in 1946, done by the U.S. military, right when they took over from Japan. And what I've been doing is I've been piece by piece overlaying parts of Kakao map on top of this, trying to track down where all this is. But one defining feature you can just see from the macro view is how different the Han River looks back then. It really was mostly sandbanks. And it was only around the late 80s, early 90s that they put in these these, uh, flood walls that made it the width that it is now. Because a lot of times it really wasn't that wide in many places, especially around where he was. And they did nothing in 2011 when it flooded. (laughs) Mm, Well, yeah, but if if it always floods the Bampo Bridge, doesn't it? Is it the Bampo Bridge we're talking about? Was the one that yeah, it is the flooding. one where they have the low, the one with the the double layer. Yeah, it's supposedly now going to be designated as a pedestrian only <clears throat> motorcycles area, um, in the future. Dude, one of the buses I take takes. There's a bus stop there. Well, they're going <laughs> they're going to change it. They're going to change it all. They're going they're going to switch it off. They're oh, we, we do we do bridge. have some commenters. Sean says other Sean says has it been revealed publicly who the young man's father is. Has it? Yeah, both both fathers. Uh, mm. Do you mean the uh, Mr. A or? I don't know. He just so, says young man. So I'm not sure if he's talking about the victim. Because the victim's father has been on TV quite a lot. Yeah, and he has a blog that he updates mm-hmm. quite frequently. And he just uh, updated it because he filed criminal charges against Mr. A this week. Wow. Mm. Well, this is, this see is, how that no, this is the big drama because it, it does sound like it's not just some individual case, just like the Puck and Hay thing. It is um, where we're, we're, uh, well, like you, you're suing the system. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Everyone's suing the system. A lot of people are, are seeing it as such because they can see themselves also be become victimized. Mm-hmm. They can see it happen to them, and it's it's just more of the same old, same old. And now we have the tools and the the will to change things. Well, there's, I mean, like I was actually, yeah, I was actually helping out a bit with the Adri Matner case. Um, I'm not sure if you remember that. No, it was no, an Australian no. woman no, no. who was an English teacher oh, in Japan. Oh, oh Andrea. She came to Korea. Oh. Adri. Her name is Adri. Oh, Adri. Okay, I think it's someone yeah. else. Yeah. Um, no, she contacted me fairly early on after she had gone back to Japan because at the time I was blogging on Tumblr and I had a lot of blogs about my case and like, here are resources if you need to like talk to the police or talk here, you know, um, sexual assault organizations within Korea that you can talk to. And then I wrote uh, an article for the Korea Herald, which I was working with at the time, about foreign victims of sexual assault and what happened and how they dealt with it, which was, I mean, not a lot happened. A lot of those cases were dropped. Um, My case was an anomaly in the fact that the perpetrator was a first-time perpetrator and actually went to jail. And the detectives actually gave a shit and helped, you know, found him and, and did everything they could. 
Um, but she contacted me. And so I was kind of on the peripheries, like connecting her to people and be like, you could talk. Here's reporters that I know and trust that will do a good job. Um, and then they helped connect her with uh, lawyers and stuff. And she actually, I believe she did actually have a case where she sued the Korean police wow. for mishandling her case. Wow. Um, I'm not wow. sure if it's finished. I'm not sure. I can't exactly, I can't remember how it turned out, but I mean. That's amazing. Um, that That's where I think just a lot of people... Well, I mean, a lot of people are scared to do that, or just a lot of people are not aware of what they're going to have to go through if they do that. Yeah. <laughs> to she went through a lot. Um, yeah, she went through a lot. Good. But, I mean, she did, I mean, she had 30 Minutes Australia behind her. Like, they did an, oh, wow. they did an episode, and um, there were three cases that they covered in the episode. Two of the cases were in Korea, and her hers was like the main one because she's Australian. Um, That's good. That definitely helps. So yeah. hers was the main case that they covered, but then they also covered two other ones. Uh, another one was an American woman who was raped in Korea by a member of the U.S. military, mm -hmm. and they just kind of quietly let him leave the military, and he went back. And I, she, last time I talked to her, which was a few years ago, she was still fighting it, and this mm -hmm. was like years after it actually happened and the other one was a case that happened in japan which was um i want to say i can't remember where she from she was not american but the perpetrator was again american military um and she won her lawsuit in japan i think against oh, the japanese good. police because they oh, mishandled it that's so. good that's really good to hear it'll or happen here against the military i don't know but yeah sometimes it works Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, I think the big thing is that you try. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Right. I agree. That you stand up and be like, you know what? I don't agree with this. Something has to change. Even if my case is not going to change anything like structurally, at least it gets it gets it out there. It gets it known and it puts more scrutiny on this particular, you know, yeah. if it's it a company or more a uh, strength courage mm -hmm. and it makes the people still perpetrating some of this stuff more fearful and so yeah. mm -hmm. things could change if you yeah, yeah. it's it's like this I was, i'm reading a book on i read i was reading a book on uh traffic it's a book all about traffic and and they say like a lot of people who are bad drivers don't even or aren't even aware they're bad drivers because people don't honk their horns Exactly. That's why I I wear out my horns. <laughs> it's like you are a bad driver. <laughs> <laughs> I've oh learned, after God. after I read that, oh I'm like, God. okay, I'm gonna be more liberal with my horn use. I'm gonna be, be uh, a lot more horny. Do you do you know like in Korea, it's called a klaxon? A klaxon, like a klaxon. Klaxon, yeah. But you, I didn't know that because I was like, what? is this because and then um oh shoot i already forgot but like basically you know in america the sound is beep beep yeah mm -hmm. in korean it's either bang bang or bang bang well it depends on it, what's funny is i i've noticed like the larger the vehicle the wimpier the horn is like the the buses are e -e -e. <laughs> right but if you call them and say like oh i didn't know what the word is for like the horn and then like you say the sound they didn't know the sound but it was either bang bang or bang bang anyway so it's klaxon yeah. but basically that's a german word for like the brand like kleenex is oh really a clock because because a klaxon klaxon is like the sound of like when red alert on star trek that's the klaxon oh okay well yeah. yeah so it's basically like that's why it is and i asked the like service person i was like why where'd that word come from she's like oh it might be conglish or something and then i looked it up and there it was like a german brand for a horn oh okay <laughs> that today's new thing wow so yeah, you know you wear out your horn things right you time. learn wear it out <laughs> Well, we're going to, my God, we're going to have to wrap up. We went way over time today. Yeah, we went way over time. <laughs> I mean, like, when do we actually have time parameters? Yeah, I, I, we, 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 we should, we should. 
because we should, we do, we do. And most of the times we, we do, but it's like this conversation was so great. I know, this is fun. Sean, and I really want to have you back. You. Just to have one of these. Mm-hmm. This is so much fun. I want to oh. thank uh, Captain Mo and Tropic Girl in our chat room for showing up uh, for our mm-hmm. live, our live stream. Um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Sean, Sean, Lim, uh, tell, tell us where people can find you. Just, I want you to say it. You can go to the soul or YouTube slash the soul light. It is the soul light. And excellent, excellent material. We did a good mukbang today. Got my dinner. You really brought it out with that, like, um, chasm on chicken. That was, I was watching your cat in the background. That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, uh, until next time, stay safe out there. All right, guys. Okay, bye. Take us off. The Soul Podcast is a production of Zen Kimchi International, copyright 2021, under the Creative Commons license. Parts of this podcast may be used for non-commercial purposes if you remember to give us credit. You can contact us at sejong at soulpodcast.com. That's S-E-J-O-N-G at soulpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at King Sejong and on Facebook at facebook.com slash soulpodcast. For a transcript of this episode... Listen to it again, and write down what you hear. See you next week. Until then, may your favorite Wang Manju takeout place not close down and become a sock store. And then close down and become a kimchi waffle hut. And then close down and become a GS25. And then close down and become a KT cell phone store.